This is your one and only chance to see on the inside of a Honda 1100cc. Unless you go to somebody else's channel, which you shouldn't, because my channel is awesome. So this is my 1999 Honda Shadow. I picked it up for 2500 bucks, And the motor had a little chattering noise coming from the bottom end. Rumor has it that this particular engine model, made by Honda, while very reliable, is very noisy. It has ticking valves up top, and I'll get to those later. And it also has an issue with this primary drive gear. Now you see the gear itself has straight cut teeth, and Honda was smart for doing this because straight cut gears are extremely reliable. But they are also very noisy. And they make this loud whining noise. It almost sounds like a supercharger, if you've ever heard one spooling up. And so what they did is on that little gear there, they added this doohickey. This is a spring-loaded tensioner gear. It uses these four springs to basically hold reverse tension against the clutch basket. And in theory, that is supposed to cut down on noise caused by the teeth aligning and meshing together. But a side effect is that once the bike gets old and well broken in, once the springs get weak, it can cause the whole thing to start chattering because suddenly that plate doesn't have enough tension and it starts rocking back and forth. So what my plan is, is to take this plate out permanently, or at least temporarily for the meantime, see if that makes the chattering go away, and if it does what I think it does, or at least what I'm hoping it'll do, I won't have any more lower end rocking noises. As far as the top end goes, that's something entirely different. I'll have to take care of that another day. But for now, I'm going to try to throw this whole thing back together. And I'll report back to you and let you know what it does. Oh, and one more thing before I go. If anybody's wanting to attempt this, I'll give you a very basic rundown of what you're supposed to do. First off, remove your exhaust. In my case, it was six bolts. Two here, two here, two holding on the back. But I do have that two under one into two exhaust that comes with the Ace Tora models. Second, unbolt the frame. There are two six point Allen key bolts, look like this. They are different sizes, do not mix them up. Two go here, two go here. And I had to unbolt my highway bar on both sides. And I had to unbolt this side of the radiator frame attachment thingy. I don't know what that is. After that, I was able to pull off the cover for the clutch basket and then go ahead and pull the side cover off. It took me about an hour and a half to get done. The hardest part was removing this bolt right here that holds the primary drive gear set in. Big thing to note, do not lose position of your stator. Or whatever that is. Because your bike will not time properly if you do. I think I've got it sitting down here on the second tooth. Oh, I just noticed something. Look at this. They actually have it lined up with this big notch here. There's one in there, so you can't put it on improperly. That is cool. And that shows some good thinking on Honda. I wish more manufacturers built things like this. It's a very good design, but eh, everything has its downside. The bike is together. I would start it now, but it is currently almost 9 o'clock and my neighbors are in bed, so I don't want to bother them with the noise. It, it went better than I expected. I'll say that. I did make some mistakes along the way, but I had no trouble with the, the machine. Everything was pretty self-explanatory. Mind you, this is my first motorcycle I've ever worked on, so keep that in the back of your head for just a moment. I've already started the bike after putting oil in. The chatter is gone. I will bring you back in the morning to show you how the bike sounds. Anyway, biggest time waster. When I was putting this cover back on for the motor, I got too quick and in a hurry, and I split the gasket up top and down here on the bottom. 
Big no-no. If I hadn't caught it, I would have run out of oil about 20 minutes down the road. So that's not cool. If you do make that same mistake, you can take a small 8 millimeter wrench, back all these bolts out holding the cover on by about a quarter of an inch, pop the cover loose, and without dismantling the entire bike, take a little tube of RTV and just squeeze it into the crack. Put the gasket back in place and tighten it down. I've had this paper towel underneath of here for about 30 minutes waiting for a leak to show up and it hasn't come back. So if you do what I did, that's one way to fix it. Let's see here. A couple other tips. These bolts holding on the brake rail part of the frame, those have nuts. The bottom set does not have nuts. And I was standing here like a dummy for about 20 minutes trying to figure out where these extra nuts came from. It does not help that I've been working on this now for going on five hours by the time I get done with this video. I'm about whooped with this thing. All right, now the reason I said keep that in the back of your mind about this being my first motorcycle. I want to tell you a little lesson I've learned in my short life so far. And that is that if you ever, what was that? Hang on, I think somebody just wrecked their car. Welcome back to the final update of this video. It's another beautiful day in the great state of North Carolina. And I decided to go to sleep last night. I don't know what the car wreck noise was. Whoever crashed, they drove away before I was able to get up there. So none of my, none of my business. Okay. I have changed the oil in the bike for real this time. I got the good stuff. Fresh gallon. Put it in there. I took it for a spin this morning, and I think the noise has quieted down. So I'll go ahead and start the bike and let you listen to it. Now, it's still got that pretty bad valve tapping up top, but that's not really harmful, and I can do that some other time. The big thing was getting that sound away that sounded like a rod knock, and turns out this little sprocket here was the culprit. I'll probably keep it around on the shelf and maybe get some springs in time, you know, just to have around, but really I don't see any reason to have this in there. Hard to put it in there because people don't like hearing unusual sounds from their motors, even if the motor runs just fine, as I can attest to in my case. I took this bike, and before about 4 o'clock yesterday, I knew nothing about how the inside of it worked. Now, I've got the ideas behind the basic operating principle of an engine and transmission, but I don't know how the things piece together, or at least I didn't until I got my hands dirty. And here's the takeaway I want you to listen to. Never stop learning. And never stop trying, because the day that a man stops learning is the day that he dies. And I fully believe that. So if ever you have a problem in your life that you feel like it's too big to handle, just take a step back and think about all the people who have been through it before you, and realize that no problem is too big that you cannot handle on your own. I'm Parker. I hope you never stop learning and never give up trying. Thank you for watching the video, and I'll see you all later. Take care.